In this video, we're gonna look at Ethereum and the market sentiment at this point in time with your results, all the results that you guys have been listing on the polls that I'm putting up on my YouTube community page. So if you enjoy the content, be sure to subscribe down below, hit the bell notification icon so you see the content as it comes out. It is time sensitive information at this point in the market and YouTube has a way of shadow banning cryptocurrency content. If you do find value from the video, consider liking the video down below and share it with a friend if you think they need to see some nopium over the hopium that's out there. All right, guys, let's take a quick look at the polls which I've been putting up on the channel. So from 1,400 votes, the question was best top 10 crypto hodl for 2021. Ethereum came out well in front above Chainlink, Cardano, Bitcoin, and Polkadot. Now, it was surprising that I thought Chainlink was even a lower rank than Polkadot, even though Chainlink's been around for a much longer time. Maybe it's because Polkadot's been pumping at the moment, who knows? But uh, Polkadot was very close to Bitcoin. So I think for the, the best returns, people are looking to Ethereum and then a distant second would be Cardano. So all of this is playing into the whole market sentiment. So if you guys wanna see this in real time, of course, vote on the polls and then go back and check them out yourself because there is a bit of a trend that continues with all of these polls. So I kind of keep it similar with the cryptos that I'm talking about so that we can get some good data points moving forward. Uh, this one, again, best top 10 hodl for 2021. Ethereum wins out there. Now, if we look a little further down, uh, this one was just which is your main time frame that you're trading on. Most people are buy and hodls five ever. So 54% most people are holding. So maybe that will go towards the Ethereum supply shortage, depending on how many Ethereum my viewers hold. The 1,200 votes, pretty cool. Next thing we had was which top 10 cryptocurrency will outperform Bitcoin the most this cycle? Ethereum, huge winner, very distant second Cardano and uh, Polkadot, pretty close. Chainlink Litecoin, well down the bottom. I don't think it's going to outperform Bitcoin. I think you're probably right when it comes to Chainlink outperforming Bitcoin. It did have its massive rise in its Bitcoin value, remember, uh, late last year. And it needs to then outperform that if it's going to outperform Bitcoin. So it needs to get above its old high of the Link BTC chart. Looking at Ethereum, they think they're going to outperform as well. I hope we get to that 15% of a Bitcoin. That was the all-time high back in 2017. ETH BTC chart was 0.15 was the top. Next question down. This was about Bitcoin. Uh, fall again, new high. So will Bitcoin break 42K on this rally or fall again? Hasn't reached a new high yet. Hasn't fallen yet. We're sideways at the moment. Now, the last poll I want to have a look at is will Ethereum break its all-time high in January? 1,700 votes said yes, definitely, 70% of the 1,700. Not a chance, 10%, so we could say maybe 170 votes said no, and they just, 20% just wanna show results. All right, guys, I think I'm going to do this poll again, because this was over a week ago, and we were looking like uh, Ethereum was about to burst through its high. Now we see it pull back. What results are we going to get from that? I'm gonna post this again, so be sure to check, over, check out this poll on my page and see what the results come up as. Let's move on to the next piece. Next piece is quick look at the market cap, 1.013 trillion, Ethereum 1222, market cap 141 billion. Now I could go on and on about all these market caps, but again, we're trying to make this the home of no hopium, at least that's my thoughts. Anyway, let's have a look at the chart now. Ethereum, if I wanted to make some really big headlines and some crazy news and some super clickbait titles, which you know sometimes I do because it happens to be in the SEO. What I would do is move the chart down to an hourly chart. Now, what happens when we move it down to an hourly chart? We get a ton of noise. We can make up anything we wanna see here. Let's put some lines further up. We can say that this is going to break out of the high. We've got, uh, this actually looks pretty good. We've got an ascending triangle, which is a bullish signal, and we are above the 50%. 50% is on our Fibonacci, and uh, probably don't see it too often, but here we go. This is low to high. 
Our 50% is around 1126. If the market's above the 50%, it's much more bullish. So we've got two nice bullish signals here on the hourly chart. And remember, if we're looking at macro charts, we're going to get macro views. The one hour chart is a micro view. So these could be micro moves. We may only see it push out and again, and we end up with maybe a 10% move and people are stoked about that. But remember, we're looking at this to be the best hold for 2021. That's what you guys have said on the polls. There's a pretty decent sample size there of over 1500 for a lot of those polls. So I would think most people are around for more than a 10%. We get that 10%, maybe we shoot back down. Who knows, maybe we end up falling from here. I don't think we're going to fall from this point just with the extra bullishness of the uh, the ascending triangle plus it's above the 50% of the fib but anything is possible we're just basing stuff on probabilities so if we want to have some fun and get all emotional bring it down to the hourly bring it down to the 15 minute have a look at the four hour but if we want to take the noise out and get on with making money bring it back to at least the one day if not the three day or the weekly and make our long-term decisions from those charts. If we're making our decisions off one hour charts, wasting our time. Weekly at the moment is just doing its thing. It's just sitting up there in no man's land. It had a 50% correction. This is not based from the top to the bottom because that was a 33%. We are looking at the previous range. So this range is from the low of the swing to the high. We had a 50%. 50 percent of fantastic support levels in, in any market. And right now we're seeing it claw its way back. The volume shows us that it's starting to taper off. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw it come back to test the $1,000 area. If we got a little spike down, that would be amazing buying opportunities around that 800 to 950 area. But if we only came down to around the 1,000 to, to 1,100 again, I wouldn't see why I wouldn't be purchasing a little bit more. Obviously, we've been in Ethereum for a long time, buying it at 100 to 400 primarily and then again as it broke the highs into the $500 range so it's getting more risky as the market increases in value if you guys are asking when is a good time to buy wait for the pullbacks I believe we're in a bull market you do your own research because I'm not a financial advisor and come to the decision yourself whether you think we're in a bull or a bear if we're in a bull market then you buy the dips if we're in a bear market you sell the rallies these are the rallies this is the f that's a bear market these are the rallies here, 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 and you sell out. You get rid of everything, wait for this, buy again. Then we get the pumps, the dips, the pumps, the dips, and we're in a bull. Then we start to buy the dips, buy the dips, buy the dips. And it's as simple as that. The hard part is determining when does the trend change? Are we changing trend now or are we just setting up to break out of the tops? We're at a double top at the moment with the first lower swing. Anyone's guess at this point, I'm leaning to the bullish side because I think we're in the start of a bull market. All right, let's move on to the news. But before we do, if you're enjoying the content, be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button if you are not subscribed to the channel already and rank me in the comments on how my Nopium is going. ERC 20 projects, uh, we're at 226 billion. Ethereum, again, we've already looked at that before. Price is around the same, around 140 billion. This is just looking at all of the Ethereum projects and their total market cap. News, I'm sure you've all heard about this before. I put it on the channel last week, exchange is running out of ETH. So all I'm doing here is looking at the agenda. The narrative at the moment is that there is not enough ETH to go around. That's trying to send the price skyrocketing. If this is the narrative, not enough ETH, but on the chart, we're not seeing the price move up any further at the moment. Maybe it needs some time to rest and maybe this news has already been factored in to the price way back here in, well, three weeks ago in December as the price went from 600 to 1200. So it doubled. Maybe this news is late. That's why we don't rely on the news uh, for the first signs of what we want to do. We don't rely on the news to take action. We rely on the charts to take action. The news just tells us what it is later. Also here, Ethereum competitor near protocol gains 106% as DeFi heats up. So there are a lot of ETH killers out there. This time's different, coming to take the throne. I don't think it's gonna happen, but they'll probably do quite well, especially with that sort of narrative. So keep an eye on that, especially in the Ethereum space. It could be a good way to increase your ETH 
holdings. Grayscale raises 700 million in a day, its largest daily asset raise ever. That's pretty cool. We break it down. Bitcoin is by far their largest holding on Grayscale, but of course, some of that money will go to Ethereum as well. They've raised a hell of a lot in quarter four, 3.3 billion, which has gone into the cryptos themselves. Bitcoin Trust uh, led the pack quarter four with an average of 217 million raised every week. Obviously, some of this is going to spill over into Ethereum. Now, has that already been factored into the market? That's what I'm trying to understand. And again, that's the point I'm making here is why we always look to the chart first. You'll know that we go to news or Twitter or YouTube. Why did something happen? This tells you first, then the news can tell you later. Oh, maybe that was why the price moved up so heavily because this is always late. They're not going to tell us as soon as this happens. It's, it's old news. It's always old news. So we have to rely on the chart when we get to invest. The fundamentals of a project are great to understand whether it's a good investment. The news is just updates throughout the period, tells us what the chart's saying. The last thing I want to have a look at, and this is a really important one to comprehend, it's the same sort of agenda and narrative that was happening last cycle. Last cycle, it was saying this rally is different massive shift from high speculative non-functioning tokens in 2017 to Bitcoin and Ethereum, according to Pantera. This time is different. This time is different. This is the narrative. And if we're not aware, if we're not you know, in our little delusional world of buying and hoping on Ethereum or Cardano or whatever, then we're going to miss the signals. The most costly words to an investor are this time it's different. That was said by Sir John Templeton, a British investor, very well known. This time is different. It costs the average investor way too much money. This rally is different. Sounds awfully familiar. Don't believe the nonsense set out by companies who also invest in cryptocurrency. They have an agenda to increase prices and then sell out at whatever point. All this is doing is just m moving the narrative to them and helping out their own bottom line. There is probably some, some uh, real truth to it, but for the small guy, it's a difficult one to pick, figure out whether we're getting involved in their own narrative and their own agenda, or if it's really happening. My answer to this, if you don't know by now, use the chart. The chart will always tell us what they're doing because they have to sell out at some point. And it doesn't matter which exchange they're selling on, the price will eventually catch up with arbitrage. So that's what I'm looking at here, keeping in mind that someone else has an agenda and they are trying to take from me. So keep that in mind, guys. Don't be delusional out there thinking that everyone's talking about Ethereum, therefore Ethereum will never go down. It's definitely not different, things rhyme and we gotta be prepared for those changes as the markets come. But then also remember that cycles do exist. We know that if you want to bet against cycles existing, sit yourself through a bear market of a 90% drop, then see what you think after that. That's it for this video, guys. Uh, if you want to get on board with my course that's coming out this month in January 2021, head over to my website, link is in the description, leave your email address there, and the first 100 guys to sign up and purchase a course will receive a massive discount. It's coming up very, very soon, so uh, just be ready for the email to come out to you guys with the discount, and we'll move on from there. We're gonna be covering trading and investing throughout 2021 and beyond. It's a membership course as well, and it covers everything in cryptocurrency, stocks, property, all my experience over the last 15 years where I started in property, moving across to trading, and now cryptocurrencies over the last four years, all gonna be in that course, and basically building out an investment plan to reach our own financial freedom. This isn't a short-term gain, not here just for those small gains and then it's all lost against the market. Like, share it with someone who you think will find value from this. Subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. Catch you guys at the next video. Thanks again for joining me. It's my pleasure as always. And until next time, have more fun to get more done. Peace out.